Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today, Tuesday morning, December 1st. Finally, the main event of 2020 kicks off today. I'm the man they call me dead. And, you know, Tuesday mornings, we normally start it off with Dave Hero. And while I enjoy listening to the sultry sounds and the deep tenor and the rich embers of his voice, it's a lot better when we hear the smooth silkiness and sexiness of Linda K. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Meathead. Wow. I loved that intro. It didn't start with an L, but I will it take didn't. the L. No, I, I'll <laughs> take it. <laughs> it's been a long 2020. You see what I did there? Uh, yes, a long time 2020. That's right, Anyone. long time. Uh, let's talk about sponsors. We completely forgot our sponsors yesterday, so I apologize to our, our loving sponsors. But let's talk sponsors real quick. One, let's talk about our friends at Manscaped.com. They had a big uh, Black Friday sale. They had an even bigger Cyber Monday sale. You're saving all sorts of money when you're using the promo code PWR. Still getting 20% off with that one. I don't know if they've added a new one uh, this morning. But get on over to manscaped.com. Get yourself that, uh, get the lawnmower, get all the manscaping tools you need. Make sure you're silky smooth. Now, let's also talk about our friends at collarandelbowbrand.com. I hear they got a brand new t-shirt. It's possibly why Dave Hero's not here this morning. He may be running the silk screening machine. There's a new Fanny Pack Kid t-shirt out there. Absolutely. It's very eye-catching. It's so bright. It gives me the jitterbug. Yes. And, you know, um, last Christmas, I gave you my heart. And that shirt is perfect to get my drift here because he loves Wham. You know? okay. Yes. I tried to make that work. Sorry, Meathead. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Wham! Now, I say wham as Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool would say it. Wham! Yes. Um. Actually, my favorite version of Careless Whisper isn't by Wham. It's by one of my favorite bands, and I think you know of them, too. They're from South Africa. Seether does the amazing version of Careless Whisper. Sounds so much better. But that's I just... I going to say Montel Jordan. He did a version as well. Well, this is how we do it when we do PWR today, okay? That's the only yes. song I know by Montel. Also, um, I, <laughs> I know it's December 1st. I should shave this caterpillar off my face. I think I'm going to keep it. You know, I want you guys to head on over to Movember.com, donate what you can, update yourself on what we're doing with Movember.com as far as uh, men's health and prostate cancer research. I will try to keep this as long as possible. If you guys keep donating, I will keep it. Now, of course, the wife wants it off, you know, because I look like Tom Selleck or even Peter W. from the Deadpool movie, you know, Deadpool 2. Um, I, but you know what? I like it. It's like a Ned Flanders. I got a push broom going on today. So It keeps your face warm a little bit, too. That's little right. Well, that part of it. The only problem is the gator I wear because, you know, it's 2020. So everybody has, everybody has their face covered. Uh, it's 2020. So nobody can see my glorious mustache unless I flip it down. You know, it's almost like flashing them. Hey, do you mind if I flash you my mustache? Woo! And then pull it back up again. Mm, I got you. I got you. It's uncomfortable for most. Not for me because I do what I do. Uh, I am the meatiest meathead that's ever meatheaded, if that makes sense. So, Linda, let's talk about a little raw last night. Let's, you know, speaking of getting raw with the mustache, let's talk about a little raw. Uh, overall thoughts before we kind of dig deep into it. What did you think about raw last night? I didn't think it was so bad. Last time we spoke, I was a little on the fence on how much I enjoyed raw, but something about it made me laugh a lot. A lot of Miz and Morrison. Uh, Alexa Bliss brought a smile to my face. Uh, the way AJ, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but yeah. um, the no, celebrations okay. we saw yeah. gave me a chuckle. And I must say, yeah. even the, the uh, Cyber Monday WWE shop spots made me laugh. So overall, I was entertained and I was smiling. I don't know why, but yeah, but I thought th there was some movement going into TLC, which was most important. Yeah. Now we got a big pay per view coming up from NXT this Sunday, and uh, yes. we'll have an update for the PWR draft as far as the rules for the uh, War Games matches, as far as points go. But uh, let's talk about uh, some of the things that entertained me before we like dig into it. Do you feel that Riddle, Matt Riddle, is channeling his inner uh, RVD? Because that's all I get. That's the only vibe mm -hmm. I get when I listen to Riddle. It's RVD. Well, yes, but 
I don't know. Riddle just has a little bit more of a goofiness toward him. A little bit more yeah, funny he's to a me. Goof. Yeah, <laughs> he's a huge goof. Um, my kids make me slow mo the slow mo when they do the slow mo instant replay of him kicking his sandals off, mm-hmm. and I have to slow mo that on my DVR, and they love it. Watch, watch here it comes. There goes the sandals. One's going that way. One's going that way. It's for the kids. So wait, you don't actually reenact it like I do in my living room with my slippers? No, <laughs> I, I do <laughs> actually. By the way, I I'm taking out knock those down if something. I do that. I mean, I'm chucking size thirteens. No. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Could you imagine if our good friend Dave Hero did that with just one foot? I mean, there's a boot going through a window. Yes. I mean, <laughs> a walking boot. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you know. Ugh. So they make me slow-mo the slow-mo. It's fun. We watch it two, three times, and then we get back to the match. But uh, here's what really happened last night. And again, we had business. We have, you know, your phrase, you kind of coined it and kind of nailed it there. They're moving forward. We start off with a moment of bliss. And we see how we're going to get to Randy Orton and The Fiend. And it won't be Bray Wyatt. It'll be The Fiend. It's TLC. It's got to be The Fiend. (coughs) Excuse me. Bliss says, look, I know him. Randy says, I've never actually met The Fiend. He's met Bray Wyatt, but not The Fiend. And Randy said, I got to Bray Wyatt by burning his house down. Mm -hmm. So they're using Alexa as the way to get to The Fiend. What do you think? I think that's brilliant. I mean, the head games, I kind of put two and two together once they got into each other's face. Well, he's well no kind of. He's games. twice her size. I'm sorry, what? He's no foreigner to head games. Yes. Do you see what I did there? Yes. Head games. Thank you. Took me a second. Yes. Um, I mean, literally. <laughs> yes. Monday through Friday, folks. <laughs> um, but head to head, face to face. Well, kind of. He's twice her size. But I'm saying... You know, their verbal exchange and the visuals. And then I, I kind of put two and two together myself. And I was like, she's the piece that's going to put them together to really set up mm-hmm. this awesome match that we have coming. But um, again, we got a couple weeks to play out before before we go to TLC. Yeah. And using Alexa Bliss as a, she's not the pawn, but she's the. She's the go-between. Yes. Um, but it's, it was nice to see the face of Alexa Bliss and of the Fiend come from a shining grin to a look of terror in a bit, in a ways. Um, it's good that Randy Orton's getting into their head and, you know, playing a little bit of his own uh, game of voices. Hey, now that and, they're doing this live again, how can they get her to flip from normal Alexa Bliss to the one with the contact lenses and the... Um, like uh, the Laffy Taffy dripping out of her mouth. Yeah, I was thinking it was a fruit by the foot coming out of her mouth. Yeah, um, fruit stripe or fruit, uh, the, the pullable thing. I can't think of the name of it. Fruit roll ups. Fruit roll ups, that's it. Yeah. I, I think I, they can do it by just pulling the camera away from her for a second as she crouches down and gets those suckers in. Goes. Because that's what we need next is we need Randy to talk to her, try to reach the fiend, and all of a sudden the fiend reaches back through her and changes her. I like that. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's that's the next step. I think that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're going with that. We have action, right? We're probably going to get a TLC-type match. Let's mm-hmm. talk, um, you know, this is the third one, I believe, that we've had, the Symphony of Destruction. Uh, we don't have Corey Graves dropping Megadeth uh, references <laughs> during it, but we still had, um, a, you know, a match. Now, what happened in between, I've been a proponent of the 24-7 belt with our truth but for the love of God, we need to change up the people, the six same people that chase around our truth for the belt. Yeah. I mean, a couple months back, there was the train of the same group of talent chasing him. And now yeah. we have the same. Um, I, I get the comedic factor of that. But honestly, I would like to see something more solely between him and Drew Gulak or Tozawa. I think the three of them alone would be good enough that they could throw in some type of TLC match for the 24-7 title as well. Um, Sadly, though, that's a pre-show match. Yeah, most likely, but it would still be something good. Yeah. Well, they what could I'm always saying, though, come I've back a... later in the pay-per-view, too, though. Yeah. I've been 
you know, a proponent. I've been a defender of our truth in the 24 seven, you know, uh, our truth belt is what it is. It's his belt. And it's, you know, when the, he retires, that's his belt to take with him. However, I need it mixed up again. You know, um, it's the same people over and over. And again, I've probably backed him up longer than anyone else on this, but it's getting stale fast. So let's mix it up, boys and girls. Let's let's get some new competitors in there because it's the same six people that chase after him when he's out there. Maybe Gronk will get it back after this uh, football. Maybe. I mean, he just had his action figure come out at Kmart, apparently. Oh. You know, the Gronk Media action figure. Yeah, perhaps. Okay. Um, retribution. They were back on TV last night in a couple segments. Ricochet took on Slapjack. Now, they were all in masks in the back. We know what uh, Retribution did last uh, two weeks ago when they took out uh, Dana Brooke right before the Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. When Mustafa, and again, that's the correct, uh, correct pronunciation now, when Mustafa Ali was ringside for Slapjack's match against Ricochet. Dana Brooke jumps out and yells very audibly because it's an empty crowd, folks. I mean, even though they're pumping in crowd noise, it's an empty arena. Where is Mia? Who's Mia? You and I know, listeners of the program know, and wrestling fans know who Mia Yim is. She was, what was her name again? Uh, retaliation. like Reckoning. Uh, the reckoning of the retaliation of the uh, rice and beans. I, I, I have no idea. But... Oh, okay. I, I was thinking of our things. Ah, gotcha. She wears a mask and her name is Reckoning. So why would she be looking for Mia? Didn't make any sense. But what it did was set up a match between Dana Brooke and Reckoning. And we're going to skip ahead and talk about it. Reckoning's mask came off. She wore the smallest mask out of all of them. It's Mia Yim. All right. We watch NXT. It's Mia Yim. What are they doing with Attribution? Is this group on its way out the door? You know, I mean, we now know more than ever it is Mia Yim because, as you mentioned, the mask came off literally when the match started. And, you know, this was her first match as Reckoning. They made it clear to say her Raw debut. Debut, correct. Her Raw debut as Reckoning. On Her mask falls off pretty much right when the match started. And I was waiting to hear if you know, anyone at ringside was going to make some other some comment about that, but um, nothing was mentioned. Um, you obviously then the mask gets pushed away outside the ring, and no mention of <laughs> Mia Yim reckoning. Obviously, I, I you know it, it's just crazy how Dana Burke literally just said, "Where's Mia?" You know, yeah. I don't think that was meant to happen. And then first the mask coming off, and I was like, "Oh man!" And maybe did that. Did that preclude that? Did it, you know, was it the predecessor to doing that? Was it intentional? Was it not? Oh, my God, Dana just said it. Well, pull the trigger. Have your mask come off. You know what? I didn't even think about that. Maybe because after me or me, not, not me, again, but Reckoning lost the match to Dana Brooke, we have Mustafa Ali come in the ring and just tell her, you know, how uh, Retribution cannot take failure, even though they've lost before, including himself. But right. That could be quite the setup. I mean, maybe they either she's on her way out or they're descending. I I don't know, but I don't know. They got a lot of time though last night. They did, but then again, they've gotten a lot of time since the summer. Yeah. And what is what has come of it? What's happened since? What have they gotten out of it? <sighs> I mean, gotta think that Mustafa is gonna have some type of. Some type of title shot down the line as the leader. Yeah, maybe. He was working with uh, the Hurt Business, and Hurt Business rolled over those guys. Yeah. Speaking now the Hurt Business has moved on over to uh, uh, your boys. New day? Yeah, let's talk Miss TV. Um, a nice little interesting angle, even though I don't take the Miz seriously. The Miz is conniving. And he should be. That's the kind of heel he is. And I love, I was entertained by the fact that my best friend John Morrison knows when I win this belt and cash it in, he gets the first title shot because we're friends. Seamus. That's what uh, best friends do. (laughs) That's what best friends do. Seamus is being pointed out to even 
<coughs> excuse me, even Keith Lee later on in the program says, hey, word amongst the boys in the locker room. Is he going to plan on turning on your boy, Drew? Make sure that uh, you know that we're watching. It's all being set up for Sheamus to turn on Drew. Yeah, I thought that was going to be the case. I thought that it was going to be that match the second that Drew got the belt because of all the work that Sheamus has done, you know, lifting Drew up. What are your thoughts on how this is going now with Drew, Sheamus, and the poking and prodding of The Miz? You know, I wasn't going to be too surprised if Miz was going to actually get to cash it in last night just because we had AJ Styles at ringside as well. And they yeah. had uh, their conversation backstage right before the match about... And he goes, nah, oh. I'm in. I'm in. It's going to be oh, obviously easier to beat you. So. Yeah. yeah. And then even John Morrison agreed. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that, that was pretty funny. But it almost happened. But then I didn't think it was going to happen. And then I saw him actually hand over the briefcase to the ref. And I was like, no way. But um, obviously it didn't happen. Uh, I think the setup for AJ and Drew McIntyre will be great. And they'll put on a quality match at TLC. Uh, Probably a cheers but- match chair oh yeah yeah but there will be i do foresee some type of shenanigans whether it be from seamus Miz, or morrison um gosh i wonder if this could happen at tlc i i i think maybe a potential cash in will happen i don't whoa, think whoa 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 somebody calling their own number it's like you just called a quarterback sneak there yes. and have a money in the bank cash in on a pay-per-view i i just feel like who are you Bart star trying to win, score the win <laughs> This is my audible, all right? <laughs> so I am picturing I mean, that there might be a cash-in at the pay-per-view. I don't foresee Miz winning if it does happen at the pay-per-view, just because okay. uh, Drew, you know, just him having the strap on him on the road to WrestleMania, I think would be huge. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> the strap on his shoulder, that is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. But... Um, but who knows? I mean, WrestleMania 27, I was in Atlanta where, I mean, Miz went in as the champion and still defeated John Cena to yeah. retain his championship. So I, anything can happen, I, I, I guess. I mean, hmm. but to go this back is to established. Okay? okay. So Miz okay. losing the money in the bank will not hurt Miz. No. It just won't. Miz is always going to be the Miz. That's true. He'll always he'll have Ms. TV. Yep. Him and Morrison will have continue their shenanigans. Um, Ms. and Mrs. I mean, again, he's it's the I mean, face he's a, of USA, as he says. Yeah. But it so, would be no. interesting. Uh, now, Otis, if he would have lost the money in a bank cash, and that would have hurt him. But no, Ms. losing it is not a big deal at all. Yeah, but I think having him holding it right now in the spotlight on him definitely yeah is a good thing because he's definitely. Bringing more meaning to the title, as he said, uh, with the Intercontinental Championship a little bit ago, he's bringing back the, uh, what's the word? Uh, the Prestige. Prestige, yeah. yeah. Isn't that a Hugh Jackman movie? Prestige? Yeah, the Prestige. Hmm. It's like Not he's sure. a magician where he pulls balls out of rabbit's hats or oh. something. Oh, out of a hat, okay. Oh, what, what did Riddle say? Uh, he said something oh. about one nut or something like no, that. Uh, he was talking about donuts. He said, if I pair up with Duncan, bro nuts. Bro nuts. Oh, my God. What a clown. But yeah. you know what? That was a, a that was a spit take for me. Yes. But Dude, we'll come over to a hookup with Duncan. People do to be bro nuts. Yes. But him and Lashley, I think that'd be a good one, too. Yeah, because once like he gets it. the silliness aside, he can go. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Lash is obviously bigger and should go through him, but... But Riddle's very strong. We saw that in, in that triple threat match where he yeah. had uh, Keith Lee up on his shoulders. Or, yeah, yeah what's his shoulders, right? Yeah, so, yeah, even though we didn't, even though we talked about and danced around it, let's talk about the triple threat. It was yeah. Keith Lee, uh, Riddle, and AJ Styles. Again, my kids make me super slow-mo uh, Riddle kicking off his slippers. The winner of the match, the safe pick, um, like I thought, uh, AJ Styles. It'll be AJ and Drew McIntyre at the pay-per-view as long as Drew doesn't have to lose the belt in the next whatever couple weeks. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a chairs match. And um, I don't see Drew losing yet. No. um, And we know that uh, Omis will be at ringside as well. So perhaps 
he might have a little more action yeah. from that match. But, um, yeah, I, I still see Drew holding on to that title and then a potential cash-in after. Okay. But it is. All right. Well, <coughs> a cash-in would be a separate match. So, you know, as far as the uh, accounting firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, you know, that'd be a successful title defense. And a separate match would be another match, and it'd be another title defense. So, I mean, you know, we'll have to see about that. Mm-hmm. But I don't see him losing that either. I don't really see him in the pay-per-view without it. Yeah. I really see him making it to WrestleMania, unfortunately. Him making it to the big show with the belt. Yeah. Him and Reigns. Sorry, a little bit of smack here. But he did have that promo, or in that interview, bringing up Roman Reigns again. So see something in the future between the two of them as well. I mean, I really wish that Reigns would lose the belt, obviously, to Kevin Owens because I need more champions. But that's just me because, I mean, look at what's going to happen this Wednesday night when Kenny Omega defeats uh, John Moxley for the AEW championship. Sadly, I won't get any points, but it'll be another champion on the team. Right, right. Well, hey, you know, we like to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what's happening on SmackDown, on AEW, on Raw. Let's talk about a little bit what's happening at NXT War Games TakeOver now. Um, we will have an official announcement this Thursday on the Super Show with Damian, Shane, and Dave, I believe, are going to be on this week. And uh, we will talk about how the scoring will happen. Um, I believe your man, Tommaso Ciampa, is actually headlining a team again. Yes. Need some points for my NXT superstars for Team Long Time. Hey, you know, we're getting close. We are, uh, honestly, it feels like we're about 75% of the way to the end of the season. Wow, time has flown by. I feel like it was just yesterday where we were... When we had Mike Wicked on laughing at us on his porch. (laughs) Yes. Wow. Well, it's been a great season so far. Of course, I talk like that because I've been in first place since day one-ish. Ish. Ish. And uh, (laughs) I'm on fire this morning. I'm telling you, it must be the extra caffeine, the extra, you know, go-go juice that I got going. I am on fire. I'm never this active with Dave. I wonder what the reason is for that. Hmm. I'm kidding, Dave. Of course, I love you. But it is always great to talk to Linda Kane. And again, friends, make sure you head on over to PWR 360 on Twitter. Uh, We'll send that link out again for the uh, Movember.com. Like I said, I plan on keeping this caterpillar on my face. I'm hoping to have it for the video this Thursday on the Super Show. But uh, Linda, anything else you need to uh, give to the people? Give them what they want. You know, we're back on the YouTube again. Even what they want, what they really, really want. Uh, you know, I'm excited for the War Games pay per view. Uh, last year's was tremendous. It was great to see a uh, little nostalgia with the pay per view, and yeah. I'm excited for the NXT one this Sunday. A lot, of, a lot of heat in that match. I mean, in, in the matches. So, or the whole you know, show. A lot of the yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. And I'm interested, really, in how the scoring will be with our PWR draft. I mean, there's just so many different things can happen. So I'll be I'll be tuning into the Super Show this Thursday and seeing just exactly how this will affect Absolutely. The All right. Well, for Linda Kay, I'm the man they call me. Did. Hey, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.